are a lot of reasons why the U.S. men's basketball team isn't playing as well as we would expect. People have cited international rules, fatigue with the two seasons back-to-back, -back, and jet lag. I'm not saying that doesn't play a part, but maybe it's something within the team. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Fumble. I'm your host, Jackie Ray. Do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up, and if you're so inclined, you can head on over to Twitter and Instagram and follow me at JRayTheFanatic. Now, we started out losing. We opened the 2020 Olympic Games with an 83 to 76 loss to France. Now, I may be the only person I know who is a huge Rudy Gobert fan, but we were not supposed to lose to France. If I'm being honest, I was rooting for Nigeria, don't judge me, but the US won that game by just nine points. Nine points! That had people scratching their heads because we're the US. We are supposed to be completely dominating teams. The way that we beat Iran, 120 to 66, that is what we expect to see, right? The US squad is filled with insanely talented people. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Drew Holiday, my boy JaVel McGee gets to play to replace Kevin Love, and of course, Keldon Johnson is playing in place of Bradley Beal. Let's not forget the fumble favorite, Damian Lillard. But what do I always say? Individual talent does not automatically translate to team success. In fact, I would argue it's much harder for a bunch of talented individuals to play together when they don't really know their role on that team. And it's not like they can figure it out over an 82 game season. They have just been practicing together since July 6th. But Devin Brooker, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton couldn't even join the team until after the finals ended on the 20th. On top of that, as much love and respect that I have for Greg Popovich, this is his first Olympics. I will give it to him that he coached the US at the Basketball World Cup in China in 2019, but that team finished seventh, which was the worst finish ever for a US men's major international competition. Now to be fair, he did have to put that team together after about three dozen people backed out. But still, this comment he made about the Olympic squad has me a little worried. When speaking about the players, he said, quote, they are bona fide, big time players, so they're not here to develop their individual games. They're here to come together, become a team, fall in love as quickly as possible, and want it as badly as the foreign teams want it. Um, no shade, Pop, cause I love you, but I think you have to rely more on talent in this situation because unless you are walking around with blinders on and headphones that are playing somewhere over the rainbow on repeat, the desire to bring it home for the love of country is divided 50 different ways right now. Not only is the desire not there, these Olympians simply do not have the support from the states. We can't even watch it without a paid subscription. If it was really about pride and country, the powers that be would make sure that the country could watch and support every Olympian for free. Since that is not the case, this is the time that you play to the ego and make sure these guys bring it home for individual accolades. To do that, you need to get everyone on the same page. Before deciding to not participate in the Olympics because of a lingering right string, Kevin Love said the team was going to have to spend a lot of time together. I agree, but someone has to facilitate that. Someone has to tell Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday not to walk around with Devin Booker face shields that say bucks and six and to stop drinking their morning coffee out of a mug with the Suns and Four guy and a sticker taped over the side that says NBA champs. First of all, that was a joke. There is no way that's happening. I mean, I would do it, but I don't think anything like that is happening in Tokyo. But I would bet some side comments here and there are for sure happening. Maybe Draymond Green has some slick words for KD, or KD is trolling everyone like he did Bam over a basketball. This is how things usually go in some fashion. It's usually good, clean fun, but it can carry over to the court if there's not a strong leader on the team. Think about it. We saw Asia Wilson and some women from the U.S. women's basketball team hanging out together while giving Dame a hard time. Again, they were together, but Dame was alone. We saw KD getting love from the world while he was out and about, but again, he was alone. 
Who is going to be the guy on the team that says, hey guys, I saw KD's story, he's on the move, let's go hang out with him. Or hey guys, let's go rescue Dame from the trolling ladies. It sounds simple, and it is, but it is these kinds of moments that build camaraderie and chemistry. So point to all the reasons in the world that you want. I think a lot of them are at play, but I think the real one is there's no real leader. No LeBron, no Kobe, not even someone like Chris Paul. It's just guys doing their thing in Tokyo. I still think even without a leader or real chemistry, the US men's basketball team will win a medal. I just think it might be a silver medal. What about you? Do you think this is much to do about nothing? Will the US men bring the gold home? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray. Thanks for watching The Fumble, and we'll see you next time.